Qigong exercises stem from China's long history of traditional Qigong culture. They are composed of physical exercises, breathing exercises, and mental adjustment. The pursuit of a healthy life and longevity has ancient roots in mankind, and in China this found expression in Qigong exercises, which over the centuries became combined with Chinese sports, medicine, and culture generally. In 1952, Chinese scientists came up with the following formula. Lifespan is a characteristic property of animals determined by both congenital genes and their living environment after birth. Practice of Qigong exercises, composed of physical exercises, breathing exercise, and mental adjustment, can stimulate the body's latent energy, strengthen the bodily constitution, and prolong the lifespan. Xi, or five animal exercises designed by Hua Tuo, a leading physician of the Eastern Han Dynasty, 25 to 220, are the earliest Qigong exercises mentioned in history books, although this system seems to have been based on much earlier exercises, evidence of which was discovered in modern times in a wall painting in an ancient tomb known as the diagrams of physical and breathing exercises. The painting clearly shows people imitating the actions of animals and birds, and there are references to imitations of the bodily shape, mind, spirit, and qi of the creatures imitated. After careful observation and bionic study of the actions of tigers, deer, bears, monkeys, and birds, Hua Tuo designed Wu Qin Xi for the adjustment of yin and yang according to the Chinese view of the integration of the human body with the natural environment. The exercises include both rigorous and supple ones. Wu Pu and Fan Er, disciples of Hua Tuo, demonstrated the efficacy of the latter's Wu Qin Xi by managing to live to the ages of 90 and over 100, respectively, marvels of longevity in those days. Hua Tuo maintained that physical exercise can improve the digestion, promote the circulation of the blood, and prevent diseases. He designed his Wu Qin Xi in accordance with bravery and ferocity of the tiger, the lissomeness and sereneness of the deer, the ponderousness and steadiness of the bear, the nimbleness and smartness of the monkey, and the rapidity and lightness of the bird. Over the centuries, Wu Qin Xi was developed into a compound set of exercises by the combination of traditional Qigong exercises and the movements of the martial arts and dancing. Health Qigong Wu Qin Xi was compiled by the Chinese Health Qigong Association in 2002. For the general reader to learn the essence of the traditional Wu Qin Xi and practice them for health improvement. The practical movements are relatively easy to perform, and their efficacy in health enhancement has been proved scientifically. As moderate aerobic movements which combine physical routines with breathing exercises and mental adjustment, Wu Qin Xi can improve the nervous and cardiopulmonary functions and trim the physique.
When practicing the exercises, it is essential to imitate the physical postures and activities of the relevant wild creatures, as well as their spiritual postures. Step-by-step -step description of the routines. Ready position. Stand in a relaxed and calm posture, with the legs slightly apart and the arms hanging loosely at the sides. The eyes should look straight ahead, and the mind should be concentrated at Dantian. Adjust the breathing to make it smooth and even. Raise the hands to chest level, with the palms facing upward. Flex and adduct the elbows. Turn the palms downward and press them down so that they are level with the center of the abdomen. This exercise should be performed at a continuous, even, and gently speed. Inhale when raising the hands and exhale when lowering them. This starting exercise is aimed at adjusting the breathing, soothing the mind, and getting rid of mental distractions. Tiger exercise. The hands assume the aspect of a tiger's paws, with the fingers separated, especially the thumb and index finger. The first and second digital joints are flexed to imitate claws. In practicing this exercise, you should show the tiger's brave and ferocious temperament and menacing appearance. The tiger exercise consists of two routines, namely raising the tiger's paws and seizing the prey. One, raising the tiger's paws. Turn the hands so that the palms are facing down with fingers separated. Make fists by slightly flexing the little finger first and other fingers in succession. Lift both fists to chest level. Unclench the fists slowly and further raise them over the head. Assume tiger's paws, then flex the fingers to make fists and lower them to chest level. Relax the fingers with the palms facing down and finally press the palms downward. When raising the hands, the body should be fully stretched, with the chest thrown out and the abdomen contracted, as if trying to raise a heavy load, inhaling at the same time. When lowering the hands, the chest should be contracted and the abdomen relaxed, at the same time exhaling. This exercise can improve the respiratory function and the microcirculation in the palms and fingers. Seizing the prey. Raise the hands with the palms up forward from both sides of the body. Bend the upper body forward, assuming tiger's paws. Press the palms down to the sides of the knees, then lift them past the sides of the body to chest level. Step forward with the left foot, at the same time flexing the right knee to enable a squatting position to be assumed. Vigorously thrust the tiger's paws forward and down to the sides of the knees. Withdraw the left foot to stand in the starting posture with the hands hanging loosely at the sides. Raise the hands forward while leaning the upper body forward. When pressing the palms down and then lifting them up, bend the knees first before moving the hips and abdomen forward and making the upper body lean backward. When the hands are raised, they should be changed to hollow fists. When they are pressed forward and down, they should be changed to tiger's paws. 
when they are lifted up again, they should be changed to hollow fists again. And when they are thrust forward and down, they should be changed to tiger's paws again. This part should be performed slowly and gently at first, then faster and more vigorously, accompanied by faster and deeper exhalation, with strength reinforced by qi from dantian, which should be extended to the fingertips. A common mistake in the practice of this exercise is improper posture of the body, with the waist bent, the head drooping, and the knee too flexed when the tiger's paws are thrust forward. The head should be protruded forward with the chin up, and the hips should be protruded backward with the waist firm, legs straight, and spine stretched. By flexing and extending the spine, this exercise can increase the spine's flexibility and range of movement, remove blockages in the meridians, and promote the circulation of qi and blood. To finish the exercise, raise the palms to the sides of the chest. Then turn them inward and press them down to adjust the breath. Deer exercise. In the practice of the deer exercise, the hands imitate antlers, with the middle and ring fingers flexed and the other fingers extended. You should try to show the lissom, comfortable, and freely running manner of the deer. This exercise also comprises two exercises, namely colliding antlers and running like a deer. Colliding with the antlers. The exercise of the upper and lower limbs should be performed in coordination with rotation of the waist. First, exercise of the upper limbs. Move both arms to the right side with hollow fists. The hands should change to the antler posture when they reach the level of the shoulder. Turn the body to the left and move the extended arms to the left rear side of the body. Second, exercise of the lower limbs. Slightly flex both legs with the weight shifted onto the right foot. Step to the left front side with the left knee further flexed. Extend the right leg straight back. Finally, turn the body to the right side and draw the left foot back to assume the starting posture with both hands describing an arc and the eyes looking down. A common mistake in the practice of this exercise is to put the foot forward with its toes pointing to the front rather than to the side. Another is not bending the body far enough laterally so that the eyes cannot see the right heel. The forward foot landing on the ground should be 90 degrees to the side of the body and the body should be slightly bent forward with the left elbow pressed tightly to the waist and the right hand fully extended backward. The right flank of the body is stretched to increase the rotation range of the waist, with the eyes able to see the right heel. Step forward with the left foot. Move both hands in an arc with the turn of the waist and look downward. Then withdraw both arms and the foot. Practice of this exercise can improve the strength of the lumbar muscles increase rotation range of the waist and strengthen the kidneys. Running like a deer. Step forward with the left foot, shifting the weight onto it. At the same time, make hollow fists and describe an arc with them in front of the body, with the abdomen contracted and the back of the body rounded. Withdraw the left foot and then step forward with the right foot. This is the only change of feet among all the exercises. Make hollow fists and describe an arc with them in front of the body before flexing both wrists. When shifting the weight backward, assume an antler's posture by medially rotating and extending both arms with the backs of the hands facing each other. The chest contracted, the shoulders and back rounded in the shape of a bow. At the same time, the head should be protruded forward. The lower back of body protruded backward, the abdomen contracted, and the hips held firm. Finally, shift the weight forward onto the flexed left leg, with the right leg extended to form a bow stance. Place the feet side by side, 
and stand erect with both arms hanging by the sides in the starting posture. The change from left side to right side exercise is made by withdrawing left foot backward with the sole of the foot flat on the ground and then stepping forward with the right foot with the weight shifted back and then immediately shifted forward. This exercise should be performed with both shoulder joints fully turned medially to stretch the back muscles and improve the mobility of the vertebrae. The adjustment of the breathing should be performed once again after finishing this exercise and resuming the starting posture. Bear exercise. In the bear exercise, the hands are formed into the likeness of a bear's paws by putting the thumb on the index and middle fingertips to make a circle, with the other fingers flexed. In the practice of this exercise, you should imitate the lumbering movements of the bear and the steadiness of its internal move. The exercise is also in two parts, namely, rotating the waist like a bear and swaying like a bear. Rotating the waist like a bear. Form bear's paws with both hands and place them in front of and just below the abdomen with upper body inclined slightly forward. Then move them to the right side and upward, and then downward and to the left side, describing a clockwise circle following the rotation of the upper body. Repeat this movement in the opposite direction. While doing so, try to feel the pressure and pull of the waist and abdomen by tightening and relaxing them alternately. A common mistake in this part of the exercise is to draw a circle with the hands themselves in front of the abdomen without the adequate movements of the waist. Another one is to rotate the upper body along the horizontal surface of the waist. To correct these, practice rotation of the upper body first with both legs standing firmly, the waist and hips held tight and the hands hanging loosely. To learn how to describe a vertical circle with the waist and abdomen only. Then practice the complete exercise in coordination with the hands to describe a vertical circle in front of the abdomen. Inhale while raising the hands and exhale while lowering them. This exercise can help to adjust the functions of the stomach and spleen to promote digestion and improve the motility of the back and waist. Two, swaying like a bear. Raise the left hip and left foot and step forward. Turn the body to the right with the right knee flexed and the weight shifted backward. Then turn the body to the left again with the right leg extended and the weight shifted forward. Repeat the exercise, this time with the movements of the left and right sides reversed. The movements of the arms and legs should be in good coordination. Beginners should first try to lift the hips without moving forward. Keep the shoulders level when shifting the weight onto one leg and raising the other leg by first tensing the waist and lifting each hip alternately. A common mistake in the practice of this exercise is to step too heavily on the ground. The foot should be placed naturally on the ground without any exertion with the knee and ankle joints relaxed to transmit a rebounding vibration to the waist. When shifting the weight, both flanks should be tightened and relaxed alternately. 
This exercise can improve the functions of the organs in the upper abdomen and consolidate the hip joints. On completion of the exercise, raise both hands along the front lateral sides of the body. Move them medially to approach each other and press them downward. Finally, adjust the breathing once again. Monkey exercise. The hands should resemble monkey's paws with the wrist flexed and the extended fingers closely assembled together like a hook or solid fists with the proximal end of the ring finger pressed by the tip of thumb and with the other four fingers flexed. You should imitate the nimbleness and restlessness of the monkey, such as turning the head continuously and scrambling up trees to pick fruit. The monkey exercise also consists of two parts, lifting the monkey's paws and picking fruit. One, lifting the monkey's paws. Extend both hands in front of the body, with all the fingers widely extended, and quickly make them assume the shape of a monkey's hooked paws. Raise the hands with the shoulders raised and neck sunk, the abdomen contracted, the buttocks tightened, the heels lifted up from the ground, and the head turned to the left. Then turn the head back to its original position. Relax the shoulders, lower the heels, and slowly press palms downward to an appropriate level in front of the abdomen. Repeat the exercise but with the head turned to the right. In order to shift the weight upward in the practice of this exercise, first shrug the shoulders and contract the abdomen and buttocks. Then raise the heels. When shifting the weight downward, relax the shoulders, abdomen and buttocks before lowering the heels. The chest and abdomen should be contracted with neck sunk, buttocks tightened, and arms pressed toward the heart. And then all of them are relaxed to restore the nature posture. While shifting the weight upward, Push the top of the head upward and maintain the balance. This exercise can produce a massaging effect on the organs in the chest and improve the functions of the heart and lungs. Two, picking fruit. This routine of picking fruit involves many changes of hand postures and eye movements. The eyes should first follow the right hand, and when it moves to a place beside the right ear, turn to look upward to the front right as if spying a peach on a tree. Squat down before stepping forward as if to climb the tree to pick the peach. Quickly form a monkey's hooked paw with the wrist flexed, then a solid fist, before turning it back into a palm as if holding a peach, with the other hand below. The movement of the lower limbs. Withdraw the left foot to the left rear side, with the weight supported by the left leg. Then withdraw the right foot backward to the medial border of the left foot, to assume a T stance. Step to the right front side with the right foot and shift the weight upward. Then withdraw the right foot to assume a T stance again. The complete routine. Withdraw the left foot to the left rear side when moving the right palm in an arc to the left. Shoulders relaxed and then look to the right. Press down with the right palm and step the right foot forward as if to pick the fruit and hold it firm with the left hand. Finally, move the left palm to a place just beside the left ear, as if to support a peach. Repeat the exercise, this time with the movements of the left and right sides reversed. This exercise can improve the functions of the nervous system and sharpen one's reflexes. Adjustment of the breath should be performed once again, 
after the monkey exercise is finished and the starting posture resumed. Bird exercise. This hand posture is called bird's wing, with all the fingers extended and the thumb, index, and little fingers tilted dorsally. During the practice of this exercise, imagine that you are a crane standing erect in a pond with your beak tilted upward, or stretching your legs and spreading your wings ready to fly. The bird exercise also consists of two parts, stretching upward and flying like a bird. One, stretching upward. When raising the hands over the head, keep the shoulders shrugged, the hips protruded backward, and the palms level. When pressing the hands down, relax the body and shift the weight onto the right leg while extending the left leg and the arms backward. Overlap the hands in front of the abdomen and then raise them in front of the head with the palms level and facing down. The body inclines slightly forward. Press both hands down to an appropriate level in front of the abdomen and then extend them laterally and backward like a bird spreading its wings to stretch the body. Finally, stand on the right leg with the left leg extended backward for maintenance of balance. This exercise, imitating a bird stretching its body by raising and pressing down both arms, with the body tightened and relaxed alternately, can promote the metabolism of the body and remove stagnation of qi in the meridians. Flying like a bird. Move hands to front of abdomen with palms face to face and then lift them laterally and stand on the right leg with the left thigh lifted up, knee flexed and shaft hung down. Repeat this movement standing on the left leg. Raise the arms till the wrists are slightly higher than the shoulders, then lower the arms with the palms face to face. Raise the arms again with their dorsa face to face over the head to assume an opening in the shape of a trumpet. Practitioners may learn to raise the arms first, lower the shoulders before lifting elbows upward, and raising wrists up successively and then pull them down through relaxing shoulders, lowering elbows, and pressing palms down by a series of wavy, wriggling movements, which can help the circulation of blood and qi. Then they may practice exercise of the lower limbs by standing on one straight leg with another leg lifted up by flexing its knee to squat down by flexing the knee of supporting leg with the tip of another foot touching the ground and then lift it up again. The exercises of upper and lower limbs should be performed in combination and coordination to well maintain body balance. The exercise can improve functions of heart and lungs, increase flexibility of joints and limbs, and stabilize body balance. The adjustment of breath should be performed once again after the bird exercise is finished to resume the starting posture. Winding down exercise to convey qi to dantian. This concluding exercise is aimed at adjusting the breath and conducting qi to dantian Raise both hands up from the sides of the body to convey qi over the top of head together with inhalation of air. Then smoothly press the hands down with the palms facing down to a level in front of abdomen together with exhalation of air. Concentrate your mind on the palms in motion, raising the hands as if holding the qi to the top of the head and pressing the palms down with a relaxed body to collect qi acquired inside and outside the body and to convey it to dentin. 
draw horizontal arcs with the hands and overlap them in front of the abdomen, the webs between the thumb and the index finger crossing each other. With closed eyes, adjust the breath and concentrate the mind at Dantian. Then slowly open the eyes, rub the palms together until they are hot, and rub the face with them several times. Finally, after rubbing the top of the head and the areas behind the ears with the palms, slowly lower the palms down the front of the body and stand with the arms hanging naturally and the feet together. This concluding exercise can adjust chi and blood, promote their circulation through meridians, and regulate functions of internal organs. Therefore, practitioners may feel comfortable after finishing the exercise.